up, which is my favorite punch. He moved very fluently, put combinations together, but everything he did was behind a good left hand. The newly forged Taylor Stewart partnership debuted last June against one of the sport's premier defensive tacticians, Winky Wright. Stewart's game plan was clear and concise, but between the ropes, Taylor made it anything but a simple fight. When Jermaine would follow Emmanuel's instructions. Keep it in the center ring. You don't never get beat until you go back in the other corner. He would have a good round, and he would win the round. He was a sitting duck for Taylor's power, and Jermaine took advantage. And when he ignored Emmanuel, he would lose the round. Right? Punches Taylor into a corner. He lands with accuracy and regularity and makes Jermaine look bad. That was a decision that he made on his own. He did not follow orders. Later on, he realized then how wrong he was. This bout is a draw. Jermaine Taylor retains his middleweight championship. I just got to start listening and start doing what I'm told to do. And he told me to stay in the middle of the ring. That's why I should have stayed there. I think he came out of that fight in fairly good shape as far as the public was concerned. But it was the fights following that where the suspicions started to come well. Maybe we had too much hope in this fight. I think if you were to go out and look for two other opponents to make Jermaine look awkward, you could scarcely do better than Corey Spinks and uh, Cassie Muma. Uh, but he's still the winner of the fights. And so there was some disappointment, disenchantment, that it wasn't working out. Taylor is in a position where he's trying to justify the status that he's held for quite some time. I'm winning. No matter what, may look bad, may look, you know, I'm winning. I still got the championship of the world, number one. Still, winning those fights didn't prevent criticism from raining down on Jermaine from the unlikeliest of places, his hometown. As once devoted members of his bandwagon were suddenly showing how fragile loyalty could be. We're hot 96.5. All right, hip hop and I'll be 96.5. I'm actually riding in my car, and I hear the dude who to throw all kind of parties for me and he on the radio talking about I don't think Jermaine is the champ. Hello, hello. Champ just walked in the building. Champ's here. I think what was so upsetting to Jermaine was the fact that a lot of the things got somewhat personal. Champ gonna party so if I can <laughs> win a fight without getting a black eye I'll get knocked right, out right. myself that's how I'm gonna win it. I don't care if Manny's in the corner with him or not he's gotta get that killer instinct back or else guess what Kelly on the 29th it's over. When I see him after the Kelly fight don't speak to me. Don't don't come up to me. If you, you know, this is personal to me. This, this is my life. He owned the town. He owned the state. But now he doesn't have that. And that's something that he's never experienced. This is a nice reminder that if you want to stay in this level, where people have a right to say these things, then you better keep performing. For Taylor and Stewart, the Uma and Spinks fights are already well in the past. The focus now is on Kelly Pavlik's devastating knockout power. And in the gym, the pair is working to sharpen the fundamental skills that originally carried Taylor to the top of the middleweight division. In the amateurs, he was a brilliant boxer puncher who everybody respected because he boxed so fluently. And recently, as a professional fighter, he's gotten into this habit of just dropping his left hand, bending down real low, taking his height away, no more footwork at all. I got to get back to a lot of things that I did in the amateurs. You know, I had a great job. I still got a great job, just haven't been using it. A lot more body punches, a lot more straight punches. The opportunity is there to become a greater fighter, maybe even a truly great fighter, because he's working with a guy who's proven in the past that he can bring that out. Emmanuel Stewart, world-renowned boxing genius versus a small-time unknown trainer who's gotten to the big stage and will now be tested against uh, the marquee trainer of the era. I have an asphalt ceiling business and uh, it's hard, it's tough, it's hot, you know, it's dirty. I'm up at 5.30 in the morning getting ready to go out to work and do some driveways, do some parking lots. And then I, I'll take a break and I go walk and run Kelly and then he goes home and I go back out and do driveways till it's time to come to the gym, so yeah, I stay busy. I always loved contact, and uh, I fought in the Golden Gloves. I just fell in love with the sport, and then uh, I got married, and I just uh, seen a vacant building, and uh, the rest is history. It's been 16 years since Kelly Pavlik first walked into Jack Lowe's tiny South Side gym. Since then, the two have forged a friendship rarely seen in the sport. Jack Lowe has been with Kelly since he's been nine years old. It's almost a father-son relationship now. He knows what Kelly feels, when he's feeling it. 
He knows what to say to Kelly, what not to say to Kelly. They almost know what each other's thinking. Stay behind that jazz. Stay behind one, one, two. I was fortunate. I mean, I was fortunate when Kelly walked through the door. I mean, tall, lanky little kid, and uh, and you know he couldn't even walk and chew bubble gum. And never in the wildest dreams would I guess that he was going to be a world champ or be in a position we are now. First thing I remember hearing about Kelly Pavlik long before I had ever seen him fight was this kid can punch. You knew he had a good chin. You knew there was a stoutness about him. You had a feeling that he wasn't going to disappear when a moment came. When we were coming up, I mean, I think they put the people in front of him that we were supposed to beat. Um, but I think the way he was beating them surprised a lot of people. You know, he, he destroys people when he hits them. It's scary sometimes. I've seen him hit guys where actually pissed herself in the ring. He's a brutal, brutal puncher. Pavlik scored knockouts in his first 14 professional fights. Night after night, bout after bout, winning was automatic, with the specter of a marquee opponent facing no one in Kelly's camp. Until last May, when at 30-0, Pavlik squared off with the formidable Edison Miranda. They stepped up and took Miranda at a moment when I think there were a lot of other fighters in the division would have said, oh no, anyone but that guy. He told us the day before the fight, said, I'm going to back him up. Now, nobody else backed Edison Miranda up. Edison Miranda was the guy who backed you up. It took real stones on Pavlik's part. It's one thing to say, I'm going to go in there and push this dangerous puncher backwards, and it's another thing to go in and do it. From the opening bell, both fighters were on the attack. They are trading bombs at short range. But as the fight wore on, Pavlik took control. Miranda is a bit thrown off by Pavlik coming at him. I, I think around the fourth or fifth round, I mean, you just seen discouragement on, on Miranda's face walking back to his corner. And Miranda is all but out on his feet as he slumps into the chair. They were both trying to land the big shots that would take the other guy out. And uh, from the beginning, Kelly showed superior craft. He showed greater will. He had a better understanding of what was going on in the ring. And ultimately, he set his man up and he knocked him out. His right eye closing, and this is stoppage time. Kelly Pavlik has a huge knockout victory. It was one of those moments where you don't need more than 10 or 20 seconds of observation to say, oh, I get it, he's a star. The Miranda knockout marked the most significant victory of Pavlik's career. Now the number one contender, the next step was a middleweight title bout with Taylor. Amidst the celebration came the predictable onslaught of big-name trainers vying to take over for Jack Lowe. But Pavlik has remained loyal to the only coach he's ever had. I think a lot of fighters don't know how to stand up for themselves, don't know how to put a, a, a stop to that, you know, instead of saying, you know what, where were you guys five years ago? I know what got me here. There's no way I'm going to change anything now. Lowe has been with him from the beginning. Whether he does driveways or he does roofs or he flies planes or he's a doctor at night, he trusts them. They trust each other. You know, Manny Stewart might not have been a great trainer for Kelly Pavlik, but Jack Lowe obviously is. We're 31 and over, 28 knockouts. We're fighting for the, for the world championship. I still hear it, though. You know, Kelly should be or Kelly needs a big-time trainer. That's bullshit. Lowe's counterpart is no stranger to big fights, but this time, questions arose regarding his current student's alleged lack of focus in previous camps. So Stewart did as he's done with so many of his past world champions and sequestered Taylor at his isolated, custom-made training facility in the Poconos. They asked one to pull out in the waist. <laughs> Good. Once more time. No Stewart fighter has ever lost after training here, and Taylor has adjusted seamlessly. Jermaine has never experienced this. It has everything that you look for in a training camp to me. It's serenity, it's quiet.